So I'd like to call the meeting of the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee to order. We are meeting virtually this evening, um, and we are doing that in accordance with uh, Governor Baker's uh, executive uh, order that he put through so that we could do this um, with the, amidst the pandemic that we're going through. So we have everybody here virtually. We're recording this. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to live stream this meeting, but it will be available for people to view as soon as we can get this posted and made available to people. So as soon as that's done, as soon as we finish, we'll get our tech people on that and then we can alert the public. Um, the other piece, and I'll mention it again when we get to public input, um, obviously, if this isn't live, we don't have the opportunity for public input, but we'll talk about how people can submit comments and, and uh, give us feedback after the fact. So anyway, welcome everybody. Um, we have everyone here. I will read off who is here just for the record. Um, we have school committee members, Deb Robichaud, Lori Matson, Deb Kojal, Vicki Chartier, um, Rayanne Trifolo, Hank Mason, Jeffrey Marks, um, also, Dr. Casavant is here, uh, Kate Calise, Emery Geister, Susan Varney. Uh, we also have our student reps, James Hool and Emma Hughes here as well. So I think I've hit everybody. So for the record, that is who is in attendance. Um, in accordance with the remote participation guidelines, just to set the stage for everybody, if we do take any votes, they must be by roll call. So that will be recorded. So even though we are recording this, um, for, uh, visually, we still need to do a roll call vote. So just be prepared to do that when we start taking votes. So with that said, we'll get into um, just some housekeeping business and then we'll go to Dr. Kazavant for an update of where we are. But our housekeeping includes approving meeting minutes from February 12th of 2020. So I would entertain a motion for, from someone to approve the minutes and maybe we could unmute everybody just so we can do these things. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes of February 12th, 2020. So moved. So moved. <laughs> I have a couple of so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. And I have a second. Any questions okay. or comments on the, meet, uh, on the minutes that were presented? No. Okay, seeing none, I will do roll call. Ms. Robichaud. Aye. Ms. Matson. Aye. Ms. Kojal? Aye. Ms. Chartier? I'm standing. I wasn't here. <laughs> okay. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mr. Mason? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Marks? Aye. And Mrs. Aye. Hughes says yes. So that was Aye. Um, everyone, with exception of Mrs. Chartier, who abstained, uh, votes for approval of the minutes. Our second piece of business is approving the meeting minutes of March 4th, 2020. I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, so I do have a motion and a second. And Mrs. Varney, if you need um, any clarification on who was motioning, just feel free to pop in and ask. Um, any questions or comments about the minutes as they were presented? Okay, seeing and hearing none. Again, I'll do roll call. Ms. Robichaud? Aye. Ms. Matson? Aye. Mrs. Kojal? Aye. Ms. Chartier? Aye. Ms. Trifolo? Aye. Mr. Mason? Aye. Mr. Marks? Aye. And Mrs. Hughes aye. says aye. So that aye, Brett. Is, yes. It's Debbie Kojal, I don't have any video. You don't have any video of anyone? No, I can just hear. Hmm. Should I, should I X out and start again? Yes, I would log out and sign back in. And if you look, it'll say um, sign in with, uh, there's, if you look at the thing when you sign in, there's something that you can select for okay. audio only, but you shouldn't be audio only. It should be able to do the video as well. I we had video a minute ago and then it went blank and it said your meeting should start in a few seconds. <laughs> Oh, that might be ah, I got that the, I got internet. Back. Okay. No, I'm back. Okay. Okay. Sometimes with the internet, I know it's from home at my house. It kind of goes in and out, so it might yeah. it might be that as well. It may be. Okay. Okay. 
Um, the next order of business is the, let's see, I'm sorry, I've got two screens going behind me to keep track of things. Um, our bills and payroll, I would uh, take a moment as presented. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? So moved. And I have a second. Um, again, we must do roll call. So, uh, Ms. Robichaud? Aye. Ms. Matson? Aye. Mrs. Kojal? Aye. Ms. Chardier? Aye. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mr. Mason? Aye. Mr. Marks? Aye. And Mrs. Hughes says aye. Um, I did want to bring up we, um, the signing of the warrants and put out to the committee and ask if anyone uh, wanted to consider just as a short term um, change for warrant approval. We are allowed to have just one person approve the warrants. Um, if anyone feels that this would be a good thing to do for the short term, we could certainly entertain a motion to suspend our current policy of the three person approval and utilize one person if we had someone who would volunteer to do so. And of course, if the committee as a whole decided they wanted to, um, I know it's kind of difficult to get people together to sign something when we're not supposed to be together. I don't mind doing it. I just don't know when to go and do it. So if I could just interject for a second. Um, Anne-Marie and I have been in central office on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays because we're helping out with the meal delivery. Okay. So any one of those mornings, if you want to, there's no one else there typically. Um, so that's an option if you would like to okay. come in one of those days. Sure, I could come in this Friday if you want me to. Sure. Okay. Um, would the committee then like to, someone like to make a motion to suspend our current policy where we have three people approving the warrants and delegate the responsibility to Mrs. Kojal at this point um, until we go back to business as usual. So moved. I have a second. motion to do, and I have a second. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns? Thank you, Mrs. Kojal. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. And of course, you know, all the information will be available to everybody after the fact, and we are all as a committee we're still responsible. Um, but we, at least this should facilitate the process and make sure those signatures are, are um, gotten on those warrants in a timely fashion. So thank you, Mrs. Kosha. We'll do a roll call vote on that. Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Natson? Yes. Mrs. Kosha? Yes. Mrs. Chartier? Yes. Mr. Mason? Aye. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mr. Marks? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So once again, thank you, Mrs. Kojal. Um, for this time, you will be the signator on file, and then we'll review the warrants as usual like we do here, and we'll consider going back to our old ways once this uh, issue is over. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. All right, so on to the big news, which would be our new business, uh, which isn't really new business for any of us, would be our coronavirus update. So we'll uh, turn this over to Dr. Kazavant to let us know what's been going on, um, including the announcements from today. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm just gonna ask Susan to mute everyone just because the feedback and it's just, it's hard. this um, it's been we're go obviously we're in week two or actually in the uh, tail end of week two um, so I think that without starting from the very beginning because it just would you know my letter uh, kind of talked about um, what what our focus is and our focus really was making um, you know contact right um, making sure that we were engaging uh, kids on a personal level we were offering um, you know, educational um, opportunities uh, in terms of really guiding them towards opportunities. It would look very different, um, obviously, depending on the grade level that you are at. Um, and so what's, what has been looming in the background, obviously, is that wh where are we going? Um, how are we, uh, what are we preparing for? Well, 
truthfully, the, the superintendents um, of the state really needed a commitment or at least an answer about, you know, was this going to be extended? How, you know, to say how long it was going to last, I realize is a bit much to, you know, to forecast. Um, but when you don't know an end date, it's hard to, um, it's, it's hard to plan. It's hard to uh, systematically plan lessons, you know, et cetera. But what's clear today that, um, as the governor said at uh, 3.30, is that, you know, we are, we're going to be extended to, um, with the, well, at the very least, May 4th, I believe. Um, and the call has gone out, as you heard, not only from the governor, but the commissioner himself, is that they're, we're looking to, you know, for more structured learning. And um, what does that mean? Well, we're going, we need some guidance to that uh, because simply it's just not, you know, we're talking about grades. You're talking everything from, you know, AP classes, um, you know, special education and FAPE, free and appropriate education has been a, a, a very, a, a, hu a, a huge topic that we're going to need guidance from. Um, and in, in confidentiality, uh, you know, working in small groups in terms of with kids on videos, it's, 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 um, it's, it has opened up a lot of different boxes that we don't have a lot of answers for. But as the commissioner said today, you know, given this, um, it's going to open up a lot of opportunities. We're going to have to think differently. Um, you know, it fits right into the governor's um, you know, wheelhouse in terms of uh, project-based learning um, and, and how can we look at different modes and modalities of learning. So with all that said, how does it, um, how does it apply to us, uh, to Narragansett? Well, we, uh, first off, we are, and I've said this before, but um, I think now we can really, we can show that we, we are very lucky to have the infrastructure, the technical or the technological infrastructure that we have. Um, we're, you know, Google Classrooms, and we have at least the high school one-to-one, -one, and we, we, we are certainly further along than most. And those are just two of two basic initiatives. Um, and so the way we're able to communicate and how quickly we're able to communicate, I think, um, has been fantastic. I, you know, before I go any further, I have to thank the teachers. Uh, they have done an amazing job connecting with with their kids period, um, in, in, in almost every sort of imaginable way, whether it be um, via Zoom, uh, whether it be during, Go uh, uh, I think it's Google Connect or Google, I forgot what the, they, they changed the name now to it, but um, phone calls, it's, thank you. Um, they've, they have just done an exceptionally, um, they have taken this and they've really made it their own. And so, you know, I'm very proud of them. Uh, you know, the, the effort that they've put forth um, thus far. And um, we've re we have received quite a few, you know, thank yous from parents and, and guardians. Um, so first off, I, I have to, you know, I have to really, you know, thank the teachers. Um, the administrative team has been fantastic. They've probably been on a computer more than they've ever wanted to be in their entire lives. Um, we're really driving um, this initiative. They're really steering the ship here. Um, so in terms of the educational piece or the instructional piece, um, making connections, we've, we're, we've been, we've done fantastic. What's next is where, where we're, what we're talking about now. And we've, we, uh, started those discussions last week, last Friday, we pretty much saw the writing on the wall that this was going to be extended. And what does that mean when you start switching over from, you know, just, you know, keeping kids kind of busy and kind of keeping their, you know, their brains activated um, to actually teaching content. And so um, tomorrow we will be finalizing um, or at least putting the fishing touches on what will that plan will look like that will roll out um, within the next week or so. Um, a big part of that is, is technology. And uh, Mike Wakefield and I have had conversations because remember, we have classroom sets of uh, Chromebooks, um, iPads, et cetera, in the schools, and how can we get those in the hands of kids? Because as, as I've said on a, a couple of occasions, you know, you know, we have, we know that there are families that have multiple children in their homes, but only say one device, as an example. We know that we have homes that have um, limited access to Wi-Fi, et cetera. So 
we're one of the one of the uh, one of the first things we're going to do next week is to send out you know we need to understand what their needs are and what their capacity is through a survey we're going to not only send it through kind of email well through the net etc google but we're also going to um we're also going to create ways that if folks at least get a text message or a phone call that they can somehow relate to us what their needs are because not everyone has wi-fi we we're pretty sure that everyone has email but they may not be at work right now many people give us their work email as their contact email so we're going to have to uh we're going to have to figure out things but we need to know you know exactly what we're working with and then we're going to develop you know a plan to get technology into their hands um it won't be kid for kid we do not have the enough devices in the district for you know 1400 roughly um kids to have a device in their hands we don't so we're going to have to use we're going to have to you know um we're going to have to work with that and see what each home does in fact have on top of that is that you know in terms of and the commissioner said today that guidance should be coming out tomorrow morning in terms of how we're going to assess learning is it a you know simply a pass fail credit no credit you know you have graduation credits i mean some of these things um are very very technical um especially as you get closer to graduation and so, so there's, some, there's going to be some guidance that is going to come out tomorrow morning to kind of help you know direct us um, as to how we should proceed and what are we going to tell the parents and, and and the teachers i know the teacher teams have already been working on what this may look like in some fashion is it is it paper packets is it you know just via all um you know through technology well people have some you know some some concerns with paper right giving out paper packets we certainly don't want to back at the school but parents want packets of information because they may not have a lot of devices or they're just not tech savvy enough and it's just easier for the younger students to uh, work with so we're going to have to work through a few of those and we're going to steal some ideas from our neighbors and all the other. the good news is that every district in the state is grappling with the same thing so with that comes a lot you know kind of the necessity for great ideas and so you know we are going to um we're going to work with our partners to um to uh you know to borrow any and all ideas and to use obviously uh the the safety tips that we have about handing things out to people uh paper you know, again we can do that we can hand out packets but what does that mean so um so in terms of the educational piece of this we we are have been preparing for a week. Um, the administrative team is going to meet via Zoom tomorrow morning. Um, they're going to give me their um, their ideas um, how it, you know it applies to their grade level, um, and 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 then give me the bullet points that we're going to communicate out to um, our community, which will happen Friday. So on Friday morning, or maybe in the middle, you know, maybe the afternoon, I will have already had another conference call with the with the commissioner. And then at that point, I'm going to, we're going to do a video, not a funny video, an actual informational video, um, is in terms of what, what, uh, what our expectations are. And we're going to send that out through many forums as well, but we are going to do a video kind of explaining where, where we're going next and the time frame to do that. Um, in terms of the other things that we're, the other services we're providing, um, again, you know, we've, Mariah is worker, uh, our nurse leader um, has been absolutely um, invaluable. Um, she has been the conduit between um, DPH, um, our board of health, plural, um, and us, um, keeping us, you know, focused on what we need um, to do, uh, how to do it, how to communicate it. Um, you know, she's, you know, gathering resources, you know, et cetera. So she has been fantastic. Rick Moulton, um, Gosh, I can't tell you, you know, we, as we know, we have a mister um, that uh, has a solution um, that actually mists rooms that uh, it's for disinfecting um, and it kills, well, it kills almost anything um, on just, you know, on as soon as it hits it. So in other words, if it, when they spray that room, if it's, if there's something there, COVID, et cetera, it, it, um, it nullifies it. Um, you know he had the foresight of ordering um you know this material you know uh, back several months ago um and in terms of 
not only the schools, he's been able to miss, and we've helped our community out by missing the police station, the Board of Health office, the fire station. Matter of fact, today, I believe he missed um, uh, two ambulances, uh, Templeton ambulances. Um, yes, yes, we've done the school, but right now there's no one in the school. So except for central office and, and the cafeteria, there is no, there are no, no one's using any of the facilities. So we've been able to utilize, um, you know, that, uh, you know, which we've now we're actually getting requests from other, other municipalities um, because, you know, it's, it's, um, it's that important. Um, so, you know, Rick um, has been uh, honestly fantastic and he now is actually on a routine. He's actually on a little schedule. Every so many days he goes into the, to the police station, the, the fire station, et cetera. So, and that's important. We will always keep our children and our staff um, at the forefront. Um, we're not going to do, you know, we're not going to utilize all of these um, our resources, but I think we'd all agree at this point in time, school the the physical nature of school is not is not is not really of prime importance right now it's it's to help um our you know our um our first responders and you know we've donated masks um and and other things to the hospital um because they need them now it, it does no good for the school to hold on to say 30 40 50 masks when they need them at the hospital who are caring for our community uh, members so um Ed Pedrazic, uh, we've we're probably up, we're around averaging about 140 meals a day. And I'm looking at Anne Marie, and I think I've or at least okay. So we we've broken this down into three days: Monday, Wednesday, Friday deliveries. We're using the buses to drop them off in central locations. Not a lot of people had difficulty um, with with coming to the school. So we're you know we're we're they're making about 140 140 lunches um, each time we go out. And that has met, um, you know, obviously people have been very appreciative of that. We know that um, our, you know, our community needs that. Um, we've had a great uh, amount of volunteers who've come in to make this, you know, the, the, our cafeteria uh, staff, our custodial staff have come in and helped um, make these bag lunches. And that's exactly what they are. We provide lunch and breakfast for the following day. So actually now we're doing it for two days, right? So if Monday's a drop off, it's Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, you get it for Wednesday, Thursday, and, you know, go from there. Um, so uh, in terms of COVID-19, um, I think our role uh, for the, as the school, not only as educators, but as the school has changed dramatically in the last uh, five, six days, quite frankly. The, you know, we're, so we are sharing resources, we're sharing information, um, and we're in regular contact. So I, there's a lot more to come and, and folks will not only receive a letter, but um, again, some direction about where we're going academically. But in a nutshell, um, I can't, oh, and, and two important people I should mention is, is Susan um, and obviously Anne-Marie who have, who have manned um, central office, or at least if, if not every day, but on those every other day, um, helping out with the meals and coordinating buses and phone calls, et cetera. Um, we are, we only go in on the days that is a central office to go into, um, cut checks for payroll for the most part, for the most part. So we've, we've really limited even, um, exposure on that end, but, um, Anne Marie and Susan have been there, um, the lion's share of time. So a lot of information, I, I realized that and a lot of more information to come. Uh, but, um, that's, that's what I have at this, at this moment. Does anybody have any questions at this point for Dr. Casavant? Okay, seeing none at the moment, um, we'll, we'll move on through our agenda. Um, and if you think of anything, obviously we'll address it uh, when we get to the comment section. Um, but please extend on behalf of myself, and I believe I can speak for the committee on this, um, our sincerest thanks to everybody that is involved in um, getting those lunches out, the administration, the staff, everybody who stepped up to try and provide some sort of normalcy um, in these times where nothing's normal anymore. Um, you know, I know that my kids have been enjoying uh, the contact with the teachers. I think that's important. Um, Mr. Iben, I see you've joined us. I'm glad you've made it in from 
from your your survival. Uh, yeah, I don't see your spear with you, but um, it was. <laughs> so, um, but please send along our thanks uh, to everybody involved. This is um, it's nice to see everybody in the community stepping up. I see many messages on Facebook, people wanting to help and whatnot. So this has been. Um, nice to see our community step up in these times. So, okay, so we will move on. Um, normally we would do public input as um, it uh, would happen. We can't have public input at the moment because we are not live streaming this. Um, I do wanna say that if anyone has any questions, comments, or wants to offer feedback to the committee on this meeting, you can certainly Members, and you can reach us through the contact page um, on the, the website. You could also reach out to Dr. Kazavant, um, and he will forward along any questions or comments um, to the committee um, on this. So I, I do want to apologize to the community that we're not able to, to get this on a more live nature, um, but you know we'll do our best to respond to any questions or comments after the fact, and hopefully for our next meeting, uh, we'll be able to provide a live feed so people can watch us on the screen and not just watch ourselves. So um, NDEA, we do have Mr. Ivan and Ms. Parker here today. I don't know if either of you want to just kind of give us your take on how everything's been going in these interesting times. Uh, it's been uh, quite the learning experience. Um, trying to communicate with kids in a way that's meaningful. Wait, sorry, Frey, get back. Um, and have distractions. <laughs> um, but the teachers are just, uh, I mean, they're learning too. I, I know teachers just two weeks ago that didn't know how to use Zoom or Google Classroom or um, some of the other tools that they're using now, and they're getting comfortable with those. Um, you know, students have been more thankful for contact than anything. I talked to a senior, and she hadn't heard from anyone uh, till the 22nd when I contacted her, and she was like, I don't know what's going on. Uh, so it was nice to be able to, to connect with her via email, and I sent her a picture of my dog, and she sent a picture of her dog, and she's like, this made my day. I'm so happy that you're all still around thinking about us. I'm like, we are. We're just doing what you're doing, stuck at home. Um, and there's Dr. Casavant has been great. I, at first, I, I think my phone was as busy as his, which is saying something. But we answered questions as quick as we could and kind of coordinated that I would talk to the membership. But first, I would get, you know, some input from him so that there were no conflicting messages about what to expect or what was going to happen so that everything coming out from either myself or him matched so there's no confusion or mistakes or misinformation and um we've just kind of kept that going lisa do you have anything you want to add um i just want to say that like eric said the communication between the teachers has just been amazing too um it seems like everybody's really pulled together um, I've been in more Zoom meetings in the last two weeks than I did in my time with Eureka. Um, but it's all, it's all positive, it's all good. Everyone just is so worried about their kids and their students. Um, and that still seems to be the main focus. So we're all, we're all on the same team and everybody seems to be working together with a common goal. So it's, it's really good. All right, well, thank you for um, the update from the NDEA's perspective, and thank you to the two of you and to the entire, um, your entire membership, all, all the teachers for everything, um, and reaching out and making contacts to the students, because as you mentioned, that is so important um, just to know, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's so nice as a parent with kids to see just how much the teachers really care for all of the students. So um, I thank you personally. Uh, we thank you as school committee um, and please send that message along as well. So thank you. Um, next up for our regular business is the business manager's report. Um, Ms. Geister, I don't know if you wanna take us through the reports real quick, just kind of let us know how things are going. Um, sure, well, grants were on track. Um, I guess they're sort of on hold right now 
we can still request money the same way that we have been, which is through an online portal. Um, but what we can spend it on is all up in the air. Lots of our grants besides the salaries are for PD, which I don't know what's gonna happen. The only saving grace is that a lot of them have a carryover feature into next year. So I'm assuming that the state will probably just sort of look for a waiver as far as the limits go on some of those things and just let that money carry over. Um, so that's questionable. And as far as regular budget, right now we're basically salaries is what we're paying. We're kind of on hold with what we can do for our buses, what we can do for our tuitions. Um, hoping by the end of the week we have some guidance on some of that. Um, revolving accounts is another thing, you know, because we have people that get paid out of them, but there's like no income going into it. So I'm not sure how long we're going to be able to keep that going. Um, so we, we were doing really good, but now we're kind of on hold. Yeah, Maria, I have a quick question. Um, it's actually related to the, um, the um, coronavirus as well. Have we opened a separate account or are we tracking costs for that just in case there's any reimbursement um, from the state, you know, when this is all over? Yes, I have, like everybody who has, like salaries, that's pretty easy, that's obvious. And then anything that we're buying, we have it. We, we don't have a separate line, but it's pretty easy to tell which things are for it and which aren't. And I mean, obviously the lunches that he's doing, that's his only expense. I mean, thank God we just had that warrant the beginning of the month where we paid most of our regular stuff. So anything that he's generating, it's all for this. And pretty much the same with Rick. He, anything he's purchasing or that we can get a hold of, um, it's all for the cause. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions for Anne-Marie? Okay. Um, Anne-Marie, if you wouldn't mind if as you start to learn anything, um, you know, that is important if you want to push that out to the committee in case we are, we're not notified through, you know, the 500 different, I know I get newsletters from everybody, um, you know, any of any big news, um, that would be great. So we can start thinking, I'm, I'm thinking that our next meeting in April, um, we should probably have a better feel for financially what this all means. Sure. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, next up is the FY21 budget. Um, I'm going to turn that over to Dr. Kazavant, but I do want to just um, mention that we did have a finance meeting back in February, I forget the exact date, to discuss um, some additional information that we had received from um, our partners in the town of Templeton um, that was shared with us. So we did review some numbers. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Kazavant to kind of give everyone an update on what that meant and uh, what the, you know, what we potentially could do uh, if the committee so decides. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and first, you know, my apologies for not being able to be at that meeting. Um, I, w I was away and, and just could not, I just couldn't come back for that. So the last, um, and I, I have to tell you that what I have, and I'm sure that everyone has before or have been able to look at, is um, in essence a proposed um, income sheet. And what, when we last met, um, in, and it was, it was in February um, that we had, and, and the number was, um, that was ultimately um, voted on. There was information up until, and, and without exaggeration, with coming up the hallway, <laughs> to that meeting that became um well it it it, it changed it, it 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 changed the dynamic it changed the numbers um the two the two important things or there was a couple of things but one of them was the insurance um once we were able to you know finally get insurance numbers and then looking at after restructuring um what did that do staffing wise etc cetera, etc cetera, we we understood that there would be 
and I'm not certainly going to call it a savings, but you know, there was going to, it was not what we budgeted was, was more than, than, than we would need um, in terms of um, health insurances, et cetera, for staff. So, and that was, and that was significant. The other part of that is that once we, and as it was, um, as we've discussed, once you reassign all of the kids and the grades to where we, you know, where we needed them to be, elementary, K through four at Templeton Elementary School, move the fifth grade up to the, up to the middle school, have the eighth grade under the umbrella of the high school. And once you start looking and all those things start to settle, and you start figuring out what you need and what you can do and in terms of, um, well, in terms of staffing and how many people you need where, it became, it became obvious to us then, um, not immediately, but until we started seeing where things were going to settle, that there was an opportunity for us to, well, reshape um, um, our, our staff and, and, and to do some things where we could add um, services that we need uh, for example, we talked about the school psychology position at the elementary level. We talked about these things before. Um, but what it, what it, you know, in the end, what it was also about is the fact that, that every community has a number that they need you to, they would like you to, want you to hit, to get to. Well, you know, it wasn't so much always about hitting that number. It was about providing services that we, we need to provide for kids. Um, and for our staff, et cetera. But what, what it became, what became um, abundantly clear is that we could in fact hit or meet the number for the town of Templeton, okay, um, with the staff that we, had, that we had spoke about throughout this entire process, all right? So, you know, there was, there was you know, could we, are there concerns? Yes, right. We we've talked about them. That when you reduce district wide uh, K through five, uh, K through four from five to four, you you we know that there's going to be. Um, and I don't have that sheet in front of me. It's funny because it's the one thing I didn't print out. But we all know that the um, the class sizes were going to be in the 28, 29 range, etc. And we've talked about that. And we know that, you know, that's not, it's not exactly the best place we'd like to be, but it's the reality that we're in. Given what we know uh, in terms of the financial situation for both towns, um, but we knew that that was gonna be, it's gonna be one thing that we're going to have to keep an eye on. That's with nobody moving in. And we talked about that really, ultimately, this was always on the table um, for, for the budget, but the people spoke. And I don't have, we don't have to, I'm not going to regurgitate all that entire conversation we've had over the multiple meetings, both live and otherwise, but that we know that this has always been our concern. And the people came on three occasions and said, look, this is what we want the budget to be. And we know what the ramifications there are. So going back to what, um, what I think that either you have in front of you or that you've, um, that you've reviewed, <clears throat> pardon me, is a budget a number that, um, that still has the support staff, um, you know, the social emotional staff that we, that we need. Um, we've identified that as one of our, our, our most important areas. It's our, it's our largest area of need. Um, and so that, that for me was what, was what I wanted. That's what I needed because what I need is what I'm, what the kids need, right? What, what our, you know, what our schools need, what our, what our staff need. What this does though, I will be very candid, is that it does, it does reduce, um, you know, a, another teaching position, okay? So as we've talked about before, there were five teacher positions we've talked about, right? You, it's one position at the K, one, two, three, four, okay? And this, yes, there's an administrative position in there, there's other positions, but when we started talking about teachers, We've always talked about reduction of five. Um, this does reduce the teaching staff by one more. I'm talking about global, you know, overall. Um, and when I spoke with the, the building principals about this, et cetera, and it was really kind of a, is, you know, it's, it was really, you know, in essence, talking about what they felt that they needed most um, in order to um, benefit the children. 
that this cut can be made. It's not an easy cut by any stretch. No cut is easy. It'll always have ramifications, but it did in fact um, hit quote unquote the number that Templeton was was proposing. It did not disrupt um, you know the services that we you know that we envision um, for the students. It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy or it's going to be it's going to be fine. Everybody, we already talked about some of those other issues in terms of class sizes, um, but this is the number right here that um, overall the, the the grand total um, is a number that I can support because it it does in fact um, allow us to provide the services that we've been discussing you know for the last almost two years. Thank you. Um, I just uh, just for clarification for um, just anybody watching, we have has certified a budget already, and it was Thank based you. on a two point five five percent overall increase. Um, and what Dr. Kazavan's alluding to is Templeton came forth and said, um, unfortunately, with the amount of monies that you'd be asking for, um, we don't see how we can support that. But here is what we can do. Um, and that's the number now that we are looking at, um, which is a 1.18 cent increase in our overall budget, um, just so that's out there. And, um, and this is the discussion when we met as a finance committee, this was the discussion that we had had. We discussed these numbers. Um, and I see, Mrs. Trifolo, do you have something that you'd like to say? Mute. Yes, there you go. <laughs> um, those numbers and, and uh, working with, you know, servicing the students with what we need, it has to be understood by the public that our school choice revolving is holding eight teaching positions, which is close to $500,000. School choice money comes in and comes out and school choice is something that we have and we may not have but in order to balance this budget we have eight te teaching positions and health insurance which we are required to pay is it a large portion of it is in school choice so as we say that we can meet the town's number i understand that's the town's number and i understand that we can service, have to, we can service with that number. But in order to meet it, we have put two more positions into the teaching positions in school choice and health insurance. And it scares me that we have not been able to rectify that by moving them back into our budget. So by keeping them there, and as long as people understand that's how you meet that number that they've given us. And, you know, I mean, we can, oh, it, it might appear that, oh, wow, they can meet that at the one point something, but it comes at a cost. And so as long as that cost is known, it is what it is. Mrs. Matson, we'll get you unmuted. You got a comment? I completely agree with Graham. However, I um, unfortunately think that no one really cares. They don't follow the budget completely. They don't understand the budget completely. Um, it's going to fall on deaf ears and uh, it's not going to be understood. Um, I completely understand where you're coming from, and it's unfortunate. Um, but unless you're working with the budget um, constantly, or working with a budget and understand what it's what it's all about and what it's doing, um, they don't care as long as it's taken care of. I think uh, townspeople just let it go and um they don't care how you get it done just get it done 
Anyone else have any comments they'd like to make on, on this new proposed number? And then we can talk about if we'd like to consider it. Dr. Kazavant, I see you raising your hand. <laughs> so crazy. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I think that, uh, that the point is well taken is that, um, you know, uh, you know I, I don't want to minimize this to have your cake and eat it too, right? You can't. So you can't just say, well, we don't want any school choice kids because it's not a, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, it doesn't financially work out. And, and we've talked about this. Well, we are dependent on school choice um, monies, period. We are um, the, the kind of into everyone's point, which is absolutely correct. But if at some point someone has to make a, you know, make a decision, I think that we, um, we wouldn't, we can't take any school choice students coming up next year, even if we wanted to. Um, and at any grade between, I, I was a was a K through K through seven at least. I mean that's at, that's at the minimum. Uh, no K through eight. What am I saying? K through eight. Um, we, our numbers are just huge. Um, so this this is one of those things where we're gonna you know you you if you want your if you want your you know a low if you don't want the schools costing a lot of money then you you almost have to be a a, a super fan for school choice. You really do, um, because it you know that's the only way that we're going to offset a lot of these costs. And by the way, the costs that are in school choice, just so we're clear, eighty percent of it is staff and um, health insurance. Period. We have to slowly work our way back to getting those positions into the the, the you know the, the general fund, right, our regular budget. But you know, given that you know everyone's trying to dig out and this has nothing to do with COVID. This conversation happened before all of this happened anyway. So just want to be clear about it. No one is leaning on COVID because that's why we have to do it. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, the people have spoken. I, I don't want to go so far as to say that people don't care. Um, of course, I was there for all three meetings and, and all three meetings, it was soundly defeated except for the last, for the last, at the last meeting. And, and so I, I, I can't help but think that this is how, the, you know, the taxpayers, by the way, both towns, I, I just want to make sure I keep saying that this isn't just a Templeton thing, right? It's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a district wide thing that this is what the people voted. And so this is the residual of that, right? This is the, uh, the cause and effect of what happens. If we're going to make these cuts to, in order to keep the, the, you know, our school budget as low as possible, okay, this is what happens in terms of high class numbers, but also know that there's, you know, a heck of a lot of money that we're still utilizing in school choice. And so it, that, that bill, you know, is going to come to bear, but to the point, and I, and I, and I skip right over that um, in talking about the, um, the budget, I apologize. Mr. Mason, did I see you wanted to make a comment? You know, going forward, who's a school church kids and we look at that project that out because we can't tell in the elementary or junior you know seventh eighth grade so I think we need to project that out like ten years and see where where that's gonna go so we can plan better. So because I, I like think this said, we can't, we don't have room to take anyone else. So that's going to go slowly go down over the years. So the money we get in. Do you so get that? I think, Mr. Mason, your audio is cutting out, but I think um, if what I hear you saying, no. we need to project out the school choice to see at what point we may find ourselves in an up, upside mm -hmm. down position. Okay. So if maybe exactly. we can add that as an action item um, to really do a deep dive into that right, school yeah. choice account. Um, and I know school choice is actually on the, the ongoing business for next year. So um, I do want to have a further discussion about school choice um, when we mm -hmm. get to that agenda item, but it fits in here as yep. well. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to make a comment? Um, I, I did want to say a couple of things. Um, I just, because I don't think that this committee has, has said it enough. Um, you know, we have one of our member towns who were looking at moving their students out of their building. 
And I don't think we've said enough that that is not what this committee wants to do. Um, we, if you had asked me three years ago, um, if we would be making this decision, I would have, you know, shaken my head, given a little, give a little chuckle about it because I just couldn't see this coming to this point um, based on where we were. Um, so I, I want to make sure that our, our, the town of Phillipson understands that, you know, this committee is making this decision based on, on really numbers. We, we have to look at what's best for all of the students in the district. Um, and we've tried to come up with every scenario that we can to keep both elementary schools open and staffed. And at this point, um, the, the numbers don't bear that out. So I just, I wanna say that again, cause I don't think we've said it enough um, to our member towns. Um, the other thing, is I, I agree with Mr. Mason, you know, we really need to identify school choice. And again, we'll have another discussion on school choice for next year as a separate agenda item. Um, you know, that is concerning. Um, Mrs. Trifolo, your, your comments are right on. Uh, we keep talking about pulling expenses out of school choice and every year we end up back here putting expenses right back into school choice. Um, and to your point, Mrs. Matson, you know, who in the community is listening? Um, we do have a lot of people who do listen. Um, is it enough? Um, based upon the three meetings we sat through last year, um, you know, we, it was clear that the people who came out were not the ones that wanted to vote for a higher tax base to support what we wanted. So um, that puts us where we are. Anyway, with that being said, um, if anyone else have any last comments before we see if we'd like to entertain a motion for this new budget number? Okay, so I don't see any hands up. Um, Mrs. Varney, if you would unmute maybe the, the entire committee so that we can get through the motions and the seconds and then also the voting piece, um, that will probably make it easier. So the new number that we're looking at that was uh, presented back in our meeting uh, mid-February and that we all have in front of us, um, I would, uh, if someone so chooses, I would entertain a motion that the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee vote and certify the amount of $19,729,920 for the fiscal year 2021 budget. So so I have a, a motion. Do I have a second? And I, I, was that a second? I'm sorry. It was, yes. It was a second, okay. Um, you do click over. All right, so I do have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion about that number? Seeing none, um, I will do a roll call vote. Um, Mrs. Matson, how do you vote? Aye. Mrs. Kojal? Aye. Mrs. Chartier? Aye. Mr. Mason? Is that an aye? Can, it, can anyone hear him? No. I can read his lips. <laughs> I can read his lips. Can you give me a thumbs up, Mr. Mason? If, you, if you're saying yes, a thumbs up. Okay, that's a thumbs up. Um, let it know for the record that Mr. Mason gave a thumbs up saying yes, since we cannot hear him at the moment. Um, and the remote participation, if we can't hear, um, we would, we'll not be able to count his vote. So we'll get to that at the end and we'll see if we can get his audio fixed by the time we're done. Um, Mr. Marks, how would you vote? And you're on mute. There we go. Aye. Aye. Um, Mrs. Trifolo. Yes. Okay. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. Mr. Mason, let's try to unmute you and see if I can get an audio yes. Yes. Okay. So I do hear you say yes now. That was unanimous. Our next motion would be that the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee vote the estimated income as follows. Yep. Chapter, oh, Mrs. Geister, yes. When you stated the number, you said 20 at the end. It's actually 21. Which, uh, the, the overall number? Yes. Did I read that wrong? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I guess we, I'm gonna put a second motion out to change that. 
um, to entertain the motion that, sorry about that, that we, the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee vote and certify the amount of $19,729,921 for the fiscal year 2021 budget. Do I have a, a, a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> so I have a second. I'm sorry. Do you, could you hear a second, Ms. Uh, Susan? Yes. Okay. Um, again, roll call. Sorry about this, everyone. Uh, Mrs. Matson. Yes. Mrs. Kojal. Yes. Mrs. Chartier. Yes. Mr. Mason. Aye. Mr. Marks. Aye. Mrs. Trifolo. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. Oh, Mrs. Robichaud, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yes. Okay, and Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that was unanimous. I apologize for my misreading that. Our second motion, I got that right, Mrs. Geister, before I move on? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Our second motion is that the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee vote the estimated income as follows. Chapter 70 of $9,990,564. Charter school reimbursement of $27,786. Chapter 71, special regional transportation of $455,425, which are all based on the chapter 70 and 71 aid from the governor's house one budget submission for the fiscal year 2021 and excess and deficiency funds of $500,000, Medicaid reimbursements of $200,000 for a total of $11,173,775 in estimated income for fiscal year 2021. I, move. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. second. And I have a second. Um, any questions or comments? <clears throat> I'll do roll call again. Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Matson? Yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. Mrs. Chartier? Yes. Mr. Mason? Yes. Yes. Mr. Marks? Yes. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that was unanimous. The next motion I would entertain is that the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee vote the assessment to the town of Templeton in the amount of $6,909,907 for the fiscal year 2021. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Matson. Yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. Mrs. Chartier? Yes. Mr. Mason? Aye. Mr. Marks? Aye. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. That was voted unanimously. And the last motion that we need to make, I would entertain a motion that the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee vote the assessment to the town of Phillipston in the amount of $1,646,239 for the fiscal year 2021. Do I have a motion? Move. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Matson? Yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. Mrs. Chartier? Yes. Mr. Mason? Aye. Mr. Marks? Aye. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So that was unanimous. So we have adopted and certified um, our new uh, budget number of the $19,729,921 um, based upon the certification vote. Um, we'll have our treasurer send out the appropriate notifications to the towns to let them know what the assessments uh, and the budget number for next year um, is certified out. So thank you, everyone. The next item on our agenda is the FY21 school calendar. There is a draft 
um, from what I understand, as Dr. Kazavant has met with them and they've crafted um, a, a calendar for us to review. So if, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to look at it. Um, the only thing that I noticed right off the bat, which is kind of new information, is the governor did declare the Patriots Day in September. So we'll have to account for that as the day of no school. And that was September 14th. That's when he moved the Boston Marathon to. So that day will have to be counted as a day off. Um, and let's see. I see we have our election day scheduled as off which is good. Um, anyone have any questions or comments on the calendar that was presented? Dr. Kazvant's going to go back to the committee um, and retool, put in that day and, and make whatever any other adjustments necessary. There's a few dates to be scheduled for things, um, but anyone have any feedback um, that they wanna give the committee? Okay. Um, doesn't look like anybody has. I, I wanted to just ask the question I, I noticed on the second page where we looked at dates for things that we're looking at um, Warrior Fest for October 17th. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder, is there a way we could do that over Columbus Day weekend? It would be so nice to give the kids another day to have their homecoming dance with that, like we could do that Sunday and then they wouldn't have school Monday and it wouldn't interfere with the games and it wouldn't be Friday night. Um, you know, I don't know if that's possible because there's obviously the athletic piece to consider with that, but I just wanted to throw that out because I know in the past we've discussed that because um, it is such a great event and it's growing right. um, and everybody wants to participate. It, we, um, it's funny about that because that was asked and I think that the schedules just, and I'm not about our schedule. It's about when people can play home and away. And so it, it worked out that for some odd reason, and, I, and I'll go back to talk to John about this, but um, that they couldn't quite make it, make it happen. They couldn't find someone to basically play here on that weekend. Mm. Right. You know, for whatever reason, not that they were like, Oh, I ain't going out there. It just that other, the other teams had other commitments and aways or home. So it was just a matter of, um, finding a, a partner, quite frankly, to, um, to play a home game um, on that week. We just couldn't find anybody for the long weekend, in essence. Okay. But I will double check with John just in case. Great. Yeah, as I said, I, I know commentary from some of the students was, you know, they really wished to put that extra day on the weekend. Um, the dance could be on a different day, and they wouldn't have to worry about then having a sporting event the next day. So um, just, just a thought. Um, does anybody else have any questions or comments on the calendar? Um, okay, seeing none. Um, we'll look to have a finalized version for vote and approval at our next meeting. And, uh, and we'll go from there. The next item on our agenda is the Student Opportunity Act plans. Um, I know that the commissioner um, has been, there's some legislation that's in front of the state legislators that would give some authority to the Board of Ed and the Department of Ed and the Commissioner to change the dates on when these are due because it was due April 1st. Um, I don't believe that we've seen any guidance that the date has changed though. Um, and looking at our whopping 39,000 and change that we have to worry about what we're doing with, um, I don't necessarily know that we need any more time, but I'll allow um, Dr. Kazavan and Ms. Kalis to present, you know, what you put together for how we would spend this money and what the requirement was. I'll, I'll stick with the technical piece and then I'll let Kate um, speak about the, um, you know, the educational part of it, um, the, the instructional part. So you're, you're um, in, in the uh, governor's last, actually it was earlier this week, um, you know, he put forth a bill to outlining a, a bunch of things for consideration. One of them was to uh, suspend the SOA April 1st date. Everyone is, is very confident that that is going to, um, you know, pass, at least if nothing else. We're just talking about the SOA piece of this thing because not, not everyone um, has had the ample time. We, again, going back to the fact that $39,000 um, is, um, well, you know, is laughable, uh, but it's supposed to be, a, again, it's a, over a six year period of time. So we anticipate that as time moves on, we could very well receive more money 
or the money we deserve. Being held harmless, as we've talked about, is a, is a major factor in all of this. And so um, the sooner we get out of quote unquote debt with the state, because that's how it's kind of looked at in terms of um, being held harmless, probably the better. With that being said, um, the guidance was fairly clear though, because this was asked quite a bit, you know, if you're not receiving any money or, or very, very little, what is the direction? Um, because the short form was uh, designed for districts that were going to receive $500,000 and, and below. <laughs> so we're on the super duper short form, uh, <laughs> you know, or the one pager, so to speak, but um, you still had to do a plan. Now, in all seriousness, um, the district has been working towards, um, you know, our goal. Uh, spending, of course, our own money, mind you, without, with very, with, I shouldn't say without any help from the state, but certainly we used the seven, you know, 17 evidence-based program examples, and we looked at one of them was early childhood. Um, and we've, we've done that, right? We've responded to what we've, we've said is the need um, with the um, hope to be, right, moving into FY21 <laughs> edition of a school psych at that earliest level. We have an um, intense special needs teacher position there for those programming. So we have, among many other things, but so we have done, um, you know, Kate wrote the plan, so I'm not going to say, oh, it was easy to write the plan, um, but, um, but what it did, it, we've been working towards this anyway. Um, well, all we need now is money, right, to, to uh, fulfill some other um, objectives. So um, the plan is a good one. Um, it's, it, it, meets our, it meets what we're focused on and what our goals are, um, and, uh, but I'll let, um, <clears throat> pardon me, I'll let Kate speak to the, um, you know, to the, uh, to the educational portion of it. So as Dr. Casafant said, the state gave um, 17 examples of high quality evidence-based programs to consider to use this money. They were in four areas. Um, so five of them were in enhanced core instruction, another four in targeted student supports, another four in talent development, and th four in conditions for success. Number one is expanded access to full day, high quality pre-kindergarten for four-year-olds. And the commission, it says in this guidance document that the commissioner is encouraging districts to adopt one of the bold, um, bolded items, which this is, and if, districts adopt that, they are um, likely to receive multiplier funds. So what we've chosen to do is to investigate full day pre-K. Um, it's number one of the top four choices that the commissioner has. It would benefit us greatly and possibly it would um, open us up to have some multiplier funds. So far, we did, we've done some, we've been, Amory and I have been working with uh, Ms. Le, Mrs. Labonte and we had a survey out and so far we have at least 15 families very interested in this. With tuition, of course. Will we be doing, are we looking at one class a full day for the four-year-olds? And how many classes do we currently have today that are, are half day or however they're structured? You know, I, I couldn't answer off the top of my head how many classes we have. We have two full-time teachers who do some versions of a Monday, Wednesday, a morning, you know, afternoon. So there are various classes. This would be a third full-time position, but it would be, um, a full day pre-K. The other aspect of this is that we've, um, I'm just pulling up my document, so give me a second. Um, they ask, you know, various questions about this and um, our into reading program that we've adopted, which has been uh, turned out to be so highly rated, has um, kind of a an on-ramp called Big Day for Pre-K. And we've gotten a quote for, for that. And that's something that we might be able to do in as a pilot in that full-time class, on-ramping them to this literacy series. So I think it's a good plan um, educationally. I think it meets the needs of the students in the community as well. 
And um, that full day for pre-K is very affordable. And Marie and I have looked at that. Does anyone have any questions or comment for Dr. Kazavan or Ms. Kalise at this point? And let me just add that we're ready. It's written, it's ready for your approval. If you approve it, we can submit it. And that was going to be my next question. If nobody had anything further, um, maybe Dr. Kazavant, if you would recommend that we consider this for approval, we would do so. So, uh, does any first of all, does anybody have any other questions or comments? Say, so Mr. Mason. No. Nope. Okay, you, you unmuted yourself. So. <laughs> uh. Okay, so seeing if no one has any other questions or comments, um, I'll just say that I read through and it seems very well thought out um, and looks to have a lot of value for the district. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing more uh, at some sort of multiplier factor and what that really means. Um, that could be exciting. Yeah. Um, Dr. Kazavit? Yeah, so I... Uh... You're mute now. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Sorry about that. Um, we are excited about that. Um, it, it really did play nicely and I, uh, meaning into where, you know, our long range goals are, and we know that that's an area of our, you know, of focus for us. So yes, I am, I'm asking the committee to, um, uh, to consider, uh, you know, voting in the affirmative for the plan, because again, we were preparing this as if COVID didn't exist. Um, and there's really no need to, um, put it off to whenever, um, the uh, the new date will be for the SLAs <clears throat> plan. Agreed. And it's a direction that is a good direction for us, regardless of yeah. their suggestion. Regardless, right. right. Okay, so hearing that, um, that Dr. Kazit recommends that we go ahead and vote to adopt the plan. Um, if everyone would uh, unmute themselves, or Ms. Varney, if you're there to unmute everyone um, on the committee, because we'll need again to do a roll call. Um, I would entertain a motion then to approve um, the student opportunity plan as presented. So, okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. And I have a second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Matson. Yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. Mrs. Chartier? Mr. Mason? Aye. Uh, Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mr. Marks? Aye. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So we have voted unanimously to approve the uh, student opportunity plan um, as presented. So that can be noted and uh, submitted uh, as with the date of the school committee approval of uh, tonight's meeting. So thank you. Thank you for the thoughtful preparation um, and the time that was put into crafting it and going through all of the requirements. Um, you know, I know I make it kind of light of the fact that it's not a lot of money, um, but it's always, um, it, it's always, It's always clear to me that every dollar we do have, um, as small as they are, um, the, you know, Dr. Kazvet, you and your administrative team always find a way to spend them um, in the best way for our students. So thank you for the thoughtful presentation on this plan. Um, you're welcome. Uh, again, much and most of the credit goes to Kate um, and the administrative staff who really saw this as a, uh, an area um, that we really need to focus on. Okay. Thank you. All right, so next up on our agenda was just an update. When we last met, we were looking at putting an RFP together for a regional agreement amendment committee. I know there's been a lot of things that have happened in the meantime. So Dr. Kazivan, if you just kind of want to let us know where we are with that. Oop, you're mute again. I've been on enough of these, I should know better. Um, so we, uh, the RFP is written. Um, we just now need to formally post that. We've Again, we've been intermittent. Um, I ran it by um, Mars representative just to make sure that I had hit all the <clears throat> hit all the, um, the the you know the important pieces, and it has. So really, truthfully, it's just a matter of putting it out there. I I did it because of because of what we're going through right now. I had the for, uh, I think it was the fifteenth of May. I'm actually going to uh, move that to the last. I think Friday is the tw whatever the last Friday is in May. Um, I want to say it's the 29th, maybe if somebody could check me on that, I'm not sure, 28th or something. So 
Um, we're going to move it to that last day, um, uh, last Friday of May, to give more time to get it out there. And again, people aren't really focusing on things right now like this, but we'll just we'll extend it. But yes, the RFP is done. Um, it'll be posted. Um, it's been basically vetted, and um, we're ready to go. That's May 29th is the last Friday in May. Thank you. Right. May 29th. Great. Thank you. So we'll look for an update. Um, well, at our next meeting, you could just let us know if it's been posted and then um, hopefully by our June meeting, we'll have whatever responses and we can make a decision um, as to who we'd like to select to help facilitate the process Great. and then we'll move that forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone have any questions or comments on that? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, the next item on the agenda is school choice for FY21. Um, we've already kind of touched on school choice um, and that really looking at our numbers and the size of classrooms, um, there's probably not a lot of room, um, definitely in the lower grades. Um, I would like to just request that we take a look at kindergarten. Um, I know when we projected the numbers out initially, um, we use the same as the kindergarten from this year and there are school choice students in that number. I know that we're going through, we tried to do a kindergarten registration and I know some of that's been put off, um, but I would just ask that we maybe look at that um, class and see if there would be a way. We do have some pre-K students out there um, who are siblings that don't, or that are not part of the district, but they're sibling school choice in. Um, so if, if there was a way that there might be some seats, if we could you know, look at that and maybe report back um, for the next meeting so that the school committee can, can make a formal vote on what seats are available and in what's great, what grades. Um, sure, absolutely. I will say that um, I think it's this week that we're going, we're actually starting the process for um, kindergarten um, signups. Although a bit virtual, um, we're, we're, we're gathering information, although people have been um, actually knocking on our door to make sure, because again, we want, they want to make sure that they're set for kindergarten. So we'll have a better idea by the, absolutely be, um, by our next meeting, if, if not before. Anyone have anything else to add? I know we did touch on school choice already in the budget discussion, but does anybody have anything else to add on um, school choice for fiscal year 21? Okay. Um, school committee comments. Is there any comments by any of the school committee members? I'll throw the student reps into there because we didn't give you your, your time frame. If there's anything um, that anyone would like to say, just go ahead and uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself. And Ooh, Mrs. Trifolo, I see you raising your hand. Yeah, I, I, I really want to uh, reiterate that the district has move through this um, COVID crisis, if I, which is what it is for kids and families, but they've done it with ease. Um, the teacher contacts that um, many of the students have have been uplifting. It's been not too much and easing them into it, taking care of the social emotional before the academic it was well implemented and well thought out, and I think our community appreciates that. So I want to thank all involved. Uh, Mr. Hool. Um, I just, again, like Mrs. Triplo just said, I want to thank everybody. I know from the students' point of view, I've been sort of reaching out to a lot of students to make sure that they're all set um, through this whole crisis, but the school has really been helpful with getting the meals out there, the teacher contact, and everything, so thank you. Anyone else have any comments before we move on? Mrs. He Miss Hughes, sorry. Um, yeah, just to add on to kind of what, uh, what James and Mrs. Triflo were saying, um, the uh, high school especially has been uh, putting out virtual spirit week things. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. So we're in our second virtual spirit week where uh, students will like participate in different categories and send pictures in. Um, so like one day was like snow day. So we went outside and sent pictures in of us playing in the snow. So there's a picture of like James on the Instagram with his snow dinosaur. And um, another cool thing that's happening is that the high school yearbook sent out um, a survey to all the seniors asking um, input about like what it's meant for seniors 
to have had this part of their senior year taken away, like what we're missing out on. And then also silly questions like, who would we like to spend our quarantine with? Or what are three quarantine necessities? So things like that are kind of helping us stay grounded in the school community and trying to make this a little more fun than it has been. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments? No, oh, you're, you're muted. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, now you're good. Now? <laughs> yep. Um, if I might just add, I've participated in a various um, Zoom staff meetings at different levels um, with different groups of teachers and educators. And I know that we've said this, but I commend our educators at every level. People are using very creative, um, thoughtful ways to communicate with their students. They run the gamut. Um, you know, you set people free to to kind of use their imagination and they really have run with it and done a fantastic job and everyone really has kept the best interests of students at heart. So I do wanna um, just commend all of our teachers really at every level. What I've seen in these meetings, I've asked people to share things with me is just, it's really heartening. Thank you. Yeah, I, I will just reiterate what everyone said. This community has has done, and, and I love the fact that we have this tool and there's a visual touch, not just an email or an audio. And I think that's really helping people um, stay at home because the message is we need to stay at home for the good of everybody. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to our other organizations, uh, the Mass Association of School Superintendents, the Mass Association of School Committees um, are that we're members of, um, plus I'm sure the uh, Mass Association of School Business Administrators, um, they have been phenomenal with pushing information out. If anyone's not on Twitter, start following them. Um, Tracy Novick of MASC is constantly putting information out. So it's been really helpful um, that we belong to those organizations and they're advocating for us and sharing information. So I wanna give a shout out um, to those organizations that are helping us as well through this, um, these times. Any other comments? Dr. Kazavant, you had your hand raised. You can yes. unmute yourself. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. I want to I want to also talk about how um, honestly both towns, uh, the communication, our Board of Health, um, she has been fantastic. So we had a, um, the fire department, um, you know, all of I mean, again, most people are working, uh, you know, e either uh, in isolation or, or from home. Um, and I'll tell you, it takes a lot to get everybody into one place to have these very important conversations and. I, I certainly I love that with ease it, it it certainly hasn't been easy but people have been very very accommodating um, and just really when I say relaxed understanding that we we need to get you know it takes us time to get back to people but um, we've um, we've had some uh, some excellent conversations and a lot of help um, between the towns and the district etc so it's it's been it's been as it's been as good as it could possibly be it really has thank you all right, any other comments? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Um, it's time for our superintendent report. I know that Dr. Kazimet, you have put a ton of information out there. Uh, we did have a note for a rural school aid report. And, um, and if you wanted to talk about where we are enrollment wise um, for FY20, even though we physically don't have any students in the building, um, <laughs> you wanna give us those updates, that would be great. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So um, we, we were on time um, in re in regards to um, submitting our rural school aid update. So, just to kind of recap, we we received um, approximately thirty five thousand dollars almost right off the bat, um, and then we had to submit a plan. And in order for us to receive the other thirty five thousand dollars, give or take, we had to we had to put the plan in, um, and we did so. Uh, as discussed, what we what we were focusing on. Um, you know, and uh, to Ms. Matson's point, uh, I think it was at one of our one of our meetings. I honestly forget which school committee meeting at this point. But talking about making sure that we spend these funds on something that you know is sustainable, um, that we're not going to because if this could easily, rural aid could go away tomorrow. I mean, or next year, it could easily go away. And so if if you were to say fund a teaching position or something to that effect, and 
So now what have we, what have we done? Now we've created the situation where there's going to be a void. So we, we talked about buying vans um, because we have a tremendous need for transportation. Um, as we joked, maybe, maybe we joked, um, Sparky, the, the Narragansett warrior bus is, is uh, shaking its mortal coil. Um, it's, it is not safe to drive. It, 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 we cannot, we cannot put children in that bus. Um, I'm not laughing because I'm unsafe, but just thinking about, you know, the bus and some ideas that we've had about having maybe, um, some final words for Sparky or where will, what will we do with Sparky has been kind of, um, kind of fun. But ultimately what we want to do is, uh, you know, those, we, we are, have constant need for transportation. So, you know, if we look at the dual enrollment program, I could, we've named a lot of these things, but a vocational program that we're looking to, et cetera, for our kids, we need to get them there. And to use uh, a bus company at the daily rate would just be, it would be um, cost prohibitive. So we have, um, you know, small sports teams that we can utilize. And so that, when we spoke to Desi about this, um, um, and said, look, this is, this is our rationale, and this is, and he said, that's a great idea because they want us to work collaboratively with districts. But by the time they gave us the money and the direction to write the plan, they, they clearly realized that they didn't give us enough time to do that. They just, no one had enough time to go, you know, and say, Hey, how do you want to do this? Or how do you want to do that? Our budgets were already done. We're already in motion. But if we are going to work with another district in any capacity, or we are going to share services or whatever the case is, we need to, no matter what, we're going to have to get kids or people to, and from places. This will also help out with, you know, we, uh, what, three sports are down at Gilman Way, you know, so how do we get them there? Um, so we think this is a, an excellent use for the funds. Um, Desi agreed, you know, and we did get um, confirmation that they received our, um, our report. Um, matter of fact, I just received that notification um, uh, about four days ago. Uh, but the update is that um, we're going to receive this other allotment here if we um looking to Anne Marie I, I think somewhere by April 15th um and at that point you know we'll we'll move forward with with the plan um thank you um do you have any comments that you want to make on enrollment at this point I know we've had a few other things to focus on um but is there anything any anything else of note that you haven't been able to go over yet not really. Um, we looked at, we, we did the report um, as we do every month and it's static. Uh, you know, no one has moved or come or gone. I think they're just hunkering down. So there really is no, um, there's nothing to report one way or another, quite frankly. Great. And I'm sure that this is one of those revolving funds that Anne Marie was discussing. Um, you know, if we actually don't have students here, you know, is it a school choice sending? Are we like, uh, it'll be interesting to see what the directive will be on how all of this shakes out. So, well, exactly, exactly. Good. Okay. Um, next up is the FY21 program of studies update. When we had last met, um, we initially were talking about trying to have it ready for review and approval tonight. Uh, we then decided that we'd like the academic subcommittee to take a look at it. Um, which we're supposed to meet, uh, not next week, the week after, and then we could bring it to the school committee for the April, is it the 15th? I keep forgetting what the, yeah, April 15th meeting um, for approval. Um, I know we need to talk about the academic, the next academic meeting, if we'll do it virtually or how we'll do that. Um, but I know that um, Ms. Khalees does have some information on what they've been working on and where they're going with that. Yes, yeah, so at this point, um, high school teachers guidance, the guidance department and then the admin have all, you know, taken a look at the program studies weighed in, um, in particular, the teacher leaders of each of the departments um, on any changes that they need. And Mrs. Vassell has provided me with a draft version that has is like a redlined version. Um, a clean draft if all the changes are adopted as well as a list of changes. So we're really positioned well to do this. Um, I just need some time to look at those documents more deeply and I'll be prepared to do, um, do that and have a discussion with the academic sub. Um, a week, it is a week from Monday, I just checked the calendar. 
So Great, ready thank to you. Roll. Great, thank you. Um, and I'll reach out to um, it's uh, Mrs. Trifolo and Mrs. Kojlo on the academic sub, and we'll figure that all out logistically, um, how we will be doing our meeting. Um, and I know that the kids have started looking and picking classes um, just so that they're in process with that. Um, and then based upon obviously whatever feedback the school committee gives, if things need to be adjusted, they can and will be, but um, the kids have been engaged in to see what their interest is. So thank you. All right, so our next piece is we have some policies. So the policy subcommittee has still been very busy. Um, and we did have some policies for second reading and we had some policies for first reading. So I'll turn this over to Mrs. Kojal to give the information on the second reading and the adoptions of the policies we did first reading on last time and then the policies that we're bringing forth for first reading. Okay, I would like to bring forward the following policies for a second reading and implement them. Um, the first one is BEDH, which is public participation at school committee meetings. The second is JB, equal education opportunities. Um, proposed new JBB, educational equity. Proposed update JFABE, educational opportunities for military children. And proposed update JFABF, educational opportunities for children in foster care. There's explanations on our agenda, and so I didn't read through. Would you like me to read through all those? I, I don't think any of the explanations have changed since we did first reading, right. um, nor did we receive, as far as I'm aware of, and you can confirm any feedback from anyone um, looking for clarification or potential changes. So unless someone wants to ask a specific question. So I guess I'm making a motion to approve these for second reading. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? And if everybody can unmute themselves, because we'll need to do a roll call. So I'm looking for a second. Oh, I have a second. Um, any questions or comments on the policies proposed for second reading and implementation? Seeing none, Ms. Robichaud. Uh, aye. Mrs. Matson. Aye. Mrs. Kojal. Aye. Mrs. Chartier. Mr. Mason? Aye. Okay. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mr. Marks? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So we've unanimously approved um, second reading and implementation of those policies. Uh, next up is some first readings of some new policies. So if you want to give a little more information with the reading, that'll probably be helpful. And we'll go from there. Okay, the first one is JFBB and it's proposed new. This is strict for school choice in accordance with DESE regulations and BESE regulations. KDD proposed new. It's a new media relations and news releases. It sets policy for district for interaction with the news media. KE proposed update public complaints updated for language and to incorporate KEC, which is being proposed for deletion. KEC proposed for deletion, public complaints about the curriculum or instructional material, and it's incorporated into the proposed update to policy KE, public complaints. KHA proposed update, public solicitations in schools, and it's updated for language, best practices, and clarity. KHB proposed update advertising in schools. It's updated for language and best practices. So I make a motion to approve the first reading of those policies. So I have a motion on the floor to approve the first reading of those policies. If everyone could unmute themselves again, I would entertain a second. Second. Okay. I have a second. Um, any questions or comments on those policies? Okay, seeing none, Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Natson? Yes. Mrs. Kojal? Yes. Mrs. Chaudier? Yes. Mr. Mason? Aye. Mrs. Trifolo? Yes. Mr. Marks? Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So uh, unanimous, we have approved the first reading of those policies. Um, if anyone does have any questions or comments,
sorry, I muted myself accidentally. Um, we have unanimously approved the first reading. If anyone has any questions or comments, um, you can forward that information. Mrs. Kojal heads up the policy subcommittee. Um, you could reach out to Mrs. Kojal or Mrs. Matson or myself. Uh, we're the three members on the policy subcommittee. Um, next up, correspondence. There was, has been no correspondence that has come in. And the next school committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, April 15th. Um, we're saying 6 p.m. in the Kiva. Um, my guess is with the new order that we are not going back to school, um, that will not be the case and we will most likely do another virtual meeting and hopefully have our live streaming figured out at that point. Um, so stay tuned on that. We'll update um, the agenda and meeting information once we make some decisions on how we can make that happen. Um, does anyone have any uh, last minute thoughts, questions, or comments before we sign off? Okay, oh, Mrs. Triffolo? Yes, I wanna thank you. It's certainly not easy to adjust to this new meeting time, but you've done it with grace. So I thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, anybody have anything else? So uh, if the committee could unmute themselves, I would entertain, unfortunately we're gonna have to do a roll call, but I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion, do so I have a second? Moved. And I have a second. Mrs. Robichaud. Yes. Mrs. Matson. Mrs. Kojal. Yes. Mrs. Chartier. Yes. Mr. Mason. Aye. Mrs. Trifolo. Yes. Mr. Marks. Yes. And Mrs. Hughes says yes. So we are officially adjourned. I thank everyone and thank you to the public who are going to be watching this afterwards and we will see you soon. Thank you. Stay well. Yes. Goodbye team. Bye.